Welcome back. We're continuing our discussion with Dr. Hillary Carter about hearing loss. So we've heard about the different kinds of hearing loss. Let's continue talking about what can cause hearing loss and some preventive measures people can take. Mm -hmm. I'd like to hear a little bit about decibel levels and, and why that's so important and how our viewers can understand how that can be harmful to their hearing. Sure, so decibel is just a measurement of sound. Um, and it is something to give you an idea um, like 30 decibels is kind of soft speech and somebody talking softly. Okay. 60 decibels is a more of an average conversational level, so about what we're talking at mm -hmm. currently. And then when we get up to like 90 decibels, that gets to be an area of concern. Um, and it can be like a train sound. Um, and very loud and guns are up to like 120, 140 decibels. So the interesting thing about decibels is that it's what's called a logarithmic scale. So for each little increment we increase in sound, there's an exponentially more um, possibility of damage to the ears. Okay. Anything over 85, which typically 85 decibels, you can think of if you're needing to raise your voice you're to be heard, you're probably at that 85 decibel mm -hmm. or more volume, and you really wanna watch how much time you're spending in there. Because the more time you're there or the louder that sound, the quick one, um, the more likely some damage could occur. Okay, so can hearing loss occur the result of a one-time event or is it typically something that takes a period of time for it to happen? It can be both. Okay. So a one-time event could technically be a shotgun blast, um, could be loud enough sometimes to cause an immediate decrease in the hearing, or it could be extended periods of time like factory work or farm work or mm -hmm. um, something where you're exposed to maybe a lower level but at a consistent long-term basis. Okay. So it can be either one of those can cause hearing loss. And unfortunately, those one-time events, you never quite know mm -hmm. when they're going to be. Yes. You know, it's, the gunshot's not as a common one, but I have definitely encountered that and seen that. Um, it's typically maybe more of your explosions or really, really intense ones that typically are going to cause that sudden um, one-time event type of a thing. Okay. That's good information. So earbuds or earphones come to mind. Mm -hmm. are, are there any issues with either of those? There absolutely can be. The biggest thing is users. So it's how loud you're turning up the volume mm -hmm. in those earbuds. Um, earbuds and headphones are safe to use as long as you're using them at a normal level. Uh, one kind of key to kind of give you an idea if you're turning it up too loud, one, there are limiters on a lot of things you can download. So if you're using a phone or an iPad, pod or something along those lines, you can actually download a limiter so you can't turn it up too loud. Okay. Um, but then also if others are hearing the sound coming from outside of the earbuds, that is kind of an indicator that it might be a little bit too loud and you should definitely consider turning them down. Good advice. So how about events like concerts or sporting events and how do those rank in noise levels? So those can definitely get quite loud. Um, typically they can be... Um, Anywhere from 100 to 110 decibels. Oh, wow. um, I know one of the football stadiums has ranked as the highest um, decibel reading. I want to say it's the Seattle Stadium, but I'm not 100% oh, wow. positive on that. Um, but I want to say it's like 115 decibels that oh, they've gotten wow. their crowd into. So, and some of it will come and go. Stadiums, you know, if the team's winning, they're mm -hmm. gonna get a little bit louder. <laughs> yes, that's sweet. Um, the concerts are gonna be a little bit yes. more consistent. Okay. Um, so again, it's how long you're there okay. too. Um, right. But ideally, hearing, hearing protection being worn there sometimes can actually make the experience even more enjoyable um, because you're able to hear actually some of the music a little bit more um, or hear what you're wanting to hear with blocking out some of the more bothersome sounds. Excellent. So we talked, you mentioned shooting a little bit ago, you know, mm -hmm. gun sounds and gunshots. And so for those of us who engage in shooting and in, in using guns, what kind of recommendations do you have for that for hearing protection and, you know, any types specifically that should be yep. used? So there's a variety of hearing protection that can be used. The most effective is the one you're going to wear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So there are earmuffs that just go over the ears and those can of course be worn. Um, I know some individuals that shoot guns pretty regularly find those a little more challenging because they can knock them off as they're shooting their gun. Um, so then you could do either the foam pieces, um, there are some custom options available. Um, really the most effective hearing protection is the one you're gonna wear. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's the biggest key. And ideally anytime you shoot a gun you really should be wearing hearing yes. protection. Of course, the Montanans that love to shoot and hunt, um, I, and understanding hearing for hunting purposes, mm -hmm. there are some filtered earplugs yes. that are awesome. Um, but ideally, if you're even shooting 
when you're doing your target practicing, mm -hmm. make sure you're having your hearing protection in. Um, the more you're protecting it, the better. Part of your routine. Yep. So what about operating heavy equipment or power tools? Can that damage mm -hmm. your hearing? Absolutely. And again, it's the amount of time that you're using them typically and what you're using because um, some are a little bit quieter than others. But um, hearing protection is definitely something that would be important to wear. And if it's something where you're in a shop or type of environment where you're switching equipment, um, sometimes having just that head uh, hearing protection right near whatever equipment is louder so you can put it on, take it off when you're done, um, can be a very effective measure of making sure your hearing is protected when you're using those equipment. Okay, good. So talk about smoking and can that impact your hearing? Um, there's definitely some research on smoking having an impact on the hearing. Um, there has been more links of smoking does affect cardiovascular um, and in the body. So the less blood flow you've got, mm -hmm. the less um, blood the ear is getting and the ear is definitely a place where it's going to be one of the first things to be sacrificed because it's not as important of a body function. Mm -hmm. um, so that lack of blood flow can definitely start to damage those hair cells and have an effect on our hearing ability. Okay and maybe um, in a few seconds or so talk about diabetes. That was interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Should folks with diabetes be a little bit more concerned about their hearing? Yeah, there's more and more research coming out. Um, there has not been a direct link of diabetes causing hearing loss. However, there is a lot of people with diabetes that have hearing loss. So it's not necessarily a causative thing, but there is a high number of people with diabetes that are much more likely to have hearing loss. Okay, thank you. Stay tuned to learn all things about hearing aids. We'll be right back.